Hello, my name is Vera, and I like to make thoughtful weekly videos about literature, specifically fantasy. However, this week I am going to challenge myself because I will be reading the remaining Emily Henry books that I haven't read before. And I'll also be recapping what I thought of the previous Emily Henry books that I read. My experience with Emily Henry so far is very mixed. And so I'm very curious what I'll think of her body of work as a whole when I'm finished. Without any further ado, Quick change before I tell you about People We Meet on Vacation. People We Meet on Vacation was a book that I picked up at the end of 2021 when I just wanted to have a quick book that I can read for the end of the year. And little did I know, I fell in love, which again, as someone who doesn't really read romance, and when I do, I usually am very disappointed, I was super shocked. We follow Poppy and Alex in two timelines, in one when they're becoming best friends and they're going on all these trips every single year, and in the present timeline where something happened between them, they don't really talk anymore, but because Poppy is really depressed, she's like, Alex, let's go on one final vacation together, because that's the last time that she remembers feeling happy. And perhaps it is the fact that we are just in Poppy's POV, but I really found Alex to be irrelevant. Ooh, but Poppy was amazing. I think an obvious pitfall that Emily Henry could have fallen into would have been the, oh no, I'm just a girl and all my problems will be saved when I find a man. But she didn't fall into that. I felt like Poppy was a really well-realized character. She goes through this process of self-realization through this book and realizes that you can't find happiness by suppressing the ugly. You need to accept it, reflect on it, and take responsibility for your part in what you did. And then in the end, to be able to forgive, perhaps not forget what was done to you. And I really thought that it was very beautiful. Alex, on the other hand, I felt was a little bit irrelevant, but <laughs> that's fine. I guess that's why I took off the 0.5 star because I just, I mean, I really didn't see him pulling his weight in this book. We really never get his side of the relationship until the third act conflict, which I felt was a little bit shoehorned in if justified, you know, because I feel like it makes sense thematically that it was there, but still a little bit, a little bit much for me. A big problem that people bring up in reviews of this book is that they see the plot twist of why Poppy and Alex aren't friends anymore coming from a mile away. And I mean, fair enough, I saw it too, but I don't think really that's the point. It was more so the emotional payoff uh, that that moment brings and how they find their way back from that, all the things left unsaid. And so I really didn't have an issue with this. It also pays homage to romantic comedies, especially when Harry met Sally, while at the same time providing us with this enchanting storyline of friends to lovers and maintaining these literary undertones that make us question what is the role of mental health in friendships and makes us question how we define success. Yeah, overall, I thought that this book was really, really stellar. So then the next book that I picked up was... Nora is this literary agent. She's very cold uh, and then she goes to the small town and then she finds her literary agent nemesis charlie and stuff starts to happen this one was very interesting to me because personally i didn't really think that it was overly romance heavy it was very very focused on nora our main character and her psychology her relationship with her family with her sister you didn't see that coming to be honest a lot of nora's fears really spoke to me as well she talks a lot about feeling like she's being left behind. And as a student who was in the international system for most of her life, I really understood that because transience was truly and is truly a big part of my life. Growing up, all my friends would leave every two to three years and I'd have to start from scratch. So, so Nora's fears really, really connected with me in a way that I don't think they'll connect with everyone, but, and other than that, I also have a younger sister and I felt that Nora's worries for her and relationship with her sister was quite similar to mine. And so that was another thing that really, really made me see myself in her. I really enjoyed what Emily Henry did with character voice in here because since Nora is an editor and she reads a lot of manuscripts, she almost starts looking at life as well as if it's like one big manuscript and is very cynical about it. I really want to give this example because I think it really showcases what you're in for. Oh, in this moment, he would be described as smelling of the forest and the atmosphere before rain comes. But of course, men don't smell like that in real life. However, I felt like Charlie, again, was kind of a nothing burger. <laughs> I love her lack of energy. Go, Go girl, girl, give us nothing. nothing. And other than the initial attraction and the good banter, 
I felt like I never really understood why Charlie was in love with Nora until the very end at least. The way I would compare Charlie and Alex is that Charlie definitely had the better banter, he was more vibrant as a character, but we didn't really have a reason for why are we rooting on an emotional level for Charlie and Nora to get together. Whereas on the other hand, Alex, we had a better understanding of why they're getting together, but I felt like Alex had less of a personality. If you put a gun to my head, I would say that people we meet on vacation is slightly better than book lovers, but it's truly, it changes by the day, so. Now moving on to the third book that I read by Emily Henry, which was... Happy Place, which didn't make me very happy. Please do not cancel me for this. To be honest, this book made me quite angry because I thought that after two bangers, I could trust this author to really provide me with a cute romance with some interesting commentary on psychology and relationships and stuff like that. And instead I got this. We follow Harriet and Wynn who broke up, but they're invited back by their friends to one last stay in their like summer house because that was their titular happy place but Harriet and Wynne have to pretend that they are still together because they don't want to break up the vacation. This book was awful. It made me so angry. Whoever told you that pottery can solve your life, Harriet, lied to you. I'm sorry. It's, oh my gosh. The, ah. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. I almost DNF because this book's biggest crime was also that it was just really boring. It was so boring. There was nothing interesting going on at all. Uh, the side characters didn't care about them. Maybe a little bit about that girl that got them all together with the reveal at the end, but I'm not going to spoil that for you, so I can't really talk about that. But yeah, it was just so boring. I felt like the publisher was like, girl, you're our new cash cow. Get writing. We're releasing a book. Chop chop. Especially when we look at it on a thematic level. The central conflict in Happy Place is sacrifice and how much can you sacrifice for your relationship, stuff like that, like to make it work. In the end, we get no sort of thought provoking resolution to that. And the romance, let me just say, I did not see sparks fly whenever they smiled. I did not. So yeah, I didn't even understand why Harriet and Wynne got back together. Yeah, so frankly, I was not impressed with this book at all. And it was an awful way to end my reading year. However, now we find ourselves here, where I have two more books left. I really hope that she can redeem herself in my eyes, but we'll see. I'll update you when I finish reading Beach Read. <music> Girls? <laughs> what was this? I feel like you liked me. This is what you're heralding as the best romance story you've written in recent memory? Really? <laughs> okay, look, I didn't hate it. I was just quite disappointed. Perhaps I just had too high expectations going in. I mean, this is her first adult romance, but okay, let's get into it. So I definitely see the seeds for her other books in here, like People We Meet on Vacation and Book Lovers, because there are literary undertones to the romance. However, it is really undercooked. It's super undercooked. We all know what this book is about. It's about January and Augustus and they're by this lake and they're writers and they're nemeses and they exchange genres to see if they can fix their writer's block. What I didn't know was that the inciting incident for January going to this lake town was the death of her father and finding out that he had this secret separate life with another woman and that she's now gonna be staying in their house. Nice. And now hear me out. <laughs> we could have gone so deep into this. Maybe again, this is these are just wrong expectations because it's supposed to be a cute, fun romance and that's not really my target genre. So again, this might just be on me, whatever. But I feel like we really just scraped the surface. But that being said, this part was still the best part of the book. And so I wanted so much more. And I know Emily Henry can give us so much more, but we just didn't get it. And I, I was really disappointed. Uh, there's like a scene with the letters. There's a scene with the other woman that is very interesting, but I wanted more. I wanted so much more, especially since the actual romance aspect of this book, it didn't blow me away. I feel like at the start, the flirtation between Gus and January were was really good. It was really good. However, after we got that first kiss scene in the car, I feel like everything just vanished and any sort of tension, any sort of 
interesting dynamic that they had just disappeared and it just turned into sex. Yeah, it just really lost the magic. And every time we were doing like romance scenes, I was like, can we please go back to January struggling with aligning this new version of her father who died and she can't talk to him about any of this with the father that she thought she knew and stuff like that. And ah, man, I just, yeah, I was really frustrated with this book and quite disappointed. So again, I, I don't think this is an awful book by any means, like Happy Place. It's just, I was really expecting more. Let's hope that funny story turns this around <laughs> because I really don't want to end this video on such a negative note. I'm going to hold my mic for this because I need all of you to hear this. Run don't walk to your nearest bookstore and get this book now. Thankfully, happily, we're ending this video on a very positive note because I loved this book. It is my favorite Emily Henry book now, and it might be my favorite romance I've ever read. So personally, I didn't think that I would like this book because it just felt very corny to me. The entire idea of, oh, we're following these two people and they were in past relationships and now their exes are dating and so they're gonna be faking that they are together, blah, blah, blah. It, it just felt so corny and it just felt like, oh, okay, I feel like too much suspension of disbelief will be required for this. She pulled it off tremendously. I loved it. I feel like with romance books, a lot of it depends on what you find attractive and how the novel kind of plays on your personal fantasies. And for me, Miles is exactly what I want in a man. <laughs> exactly. It was perfect. So I guess I fell a little bit for him as well. I feel like the John Green quote of I fell in love like falling asleep slowly at first and then all at once it exactly describes my experience with this book because at the start I was really like ew why is this guy so disgusting this book is so corny whatever and by the end I was crying I was crying I think funny story brings up a lot of different questions about love that I personally find very interesting. I feel like as a society, we find love to be something that we insist on categorizing, describing, finding what the real essence of it is. And personally, I think that to some extent, it is undescribable, that it is uncategorizable. That's why we write so many songs and poems about it. I felt that the argument that Funny Story was making is that love is an art of noticing and truly knowing someone, not just the abstraction of them that you've created in your head. And not to get too personal, but I that sentiment really, really resonates with me. But it also explores the concept of love in itself is not enough to make a relationship work. You need to figure out, does this partner, does your partner's lifestyle align with yours? Do their goals for the future align with yours, your values and things like that? And she does this by introducing very many different relationships and contrasting them with each other. For example, Daphne and Miles' relationship, their relationship with their exes, uh, the relationship of Daphne's parents. Moreover, I just came from finishing Beach Read, right? And here, Emily Henry showcases a very prominent father-daughter relationship as well. But despite it having way less page time, I think, the things she decided to say and the scenes she decided to depict and the thought processes that Daphne went through, they were way more nuanced and impactful despite there being less of them. And so it was exactly what I wanted to get from Beach Read. And of course, it, do I even need to say it? The romance is really, really good. The chemistry, the will they, won't they, it was just, it was amazing. And I really was caught up in the whirlwind of all of it. And again, it really does start off slow. So I wasn't really sold, but then when it accelerates, it just keeps accelerating even to the third out of conflict, which I think here is totally justified. Yeah, I, I really loved this book and I definitely think that you should read it immediately. So, hey, I'm glad that we <laughs> ended this video positively. <laughs> okay, that's all from me. Do let me know your ranking of Emily Henry books. Have you read them? Are you intending to read them? Anyways, that's all from me and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.